In this week's podcast, we're looking at two areas. Firstly, the economic momentum that's been coming through uh, since February 16. This is the European Economic Surprise Index, which is now sitting at fairly extended territory. We tend to get a, a backing off of those good numbers when it gets to these sorts of levels. The second is the breakdown and correlation that we've seen between stocks in terms of their performance. And this has really been um, occurring since we got that inflection in the capital cycle that we've been talking about. And we've had that political change that's been accelerating that, that change in view in terms of markets. That's giving us an opportunity to revisit portfolios and look at the composition between those stocks that are beneficiaries of macro momentum and those stocks that are, are focused on micro structural stories. And this week we've got Sean talking about the technology platforms, which are those structural stories. And we've got Nick talking about the German residential property market. Uh, and as you can see here, the technology platform stocks have now started to catch up with the, the S&P uh, and the German residential stories are still lagging quite a long way behind the DAX. In the week ahead, again, it's a heavy reporting season. Tuesday in the UK, we've got BP. In the States, we've got Church and Dwight, Michael Kors, Walt Disney. On Wednesday, we've got Glaxo, Whole Foods, Sanofi and Syngenta for the Killick stocks. And on Thursday, we've got Smith & Nephew, Expedia, Cummings. Um, and that's it from me. Thanks very much. Prior to the election of Donald Trump, the big US internet companies such as Facebook, Amazon and Google were largely responsible for driving the market higher. However, since the election, these companies have actually underperformed the market, meaning their valuations have moved closer to the average. This is despite these companies generating three times the average EBITDA growth and four times the average sales growth over the past three years. So while these companies may at face value appear to be expensive, once we factor in the amount that they are growing their sales and profit, they begin to look quite attractive. We are essentially not paying that much over the odds for significantly above average growth rates. We also believe that there may be additional value in these companies that investors are not currently giving them credit for. Taking Facebook for example, Facebook reported results on Wednesday evening that were significantly better than market expectations and really driven by its main business of selling mobile advertising on the Facebook website. However, Facebook does not split out WhatsApp and Instagram from these figures. Now we know that WhatsApp makes very little money and Facebook has only recently started selling advertising on Instagram. And what this means is that at current valuations, we are effectively getting the future growth potential of both these businesses, WhatsApp and Instagram, effectively for free. Similar options also exist at Amazon with their collection of Echo products and the investments that Google are making into technologies such as autonomous driving. So all in all, the big US internet companies are offering very strong growth rates at reasonable valuations with options on further growth already embedded into their price. And that's what makes them high conviction buys for us. One of the areas that we believe continues to be an attractive investment opportunity is German residential property. This has seen some underperformance recently as investors have perceived it to have a high correlation to rising German Bund yields. Well, we believe that this is misplaced for a number of reasons. German residential property continues to see a significant supply demand imbalance, uh, which is putting upward pressure on rents. But at the same time, there are a number of regulations that prevent significant rent increases. And the effect of this is to continue to limit the supply coming onto the market, given the uh, high building costs. Building costs are kept high by a number of environmental regulations uh, which, have, which have resulted in a significant increase uh, over the past few years. As a result, there's a situation where it is not economically feasible for developers to develop new property given current rental levels. So we believe that there's a significant undervaluation of the uh, property the property portfolios of the German residential companies uh, and that you'll probably need a doubling of property values before it is, uh, it is at a high enough level to attract new supply into the rental market. In addition, the German residential property companies can see strong returns from inflation adjusted rental increases as well as modernization possibilities which allow them to drive rents up uh, over the, the market levels. As a result, we continue to see these as attractive investment opportunities.
I work on the special situations team and we manage segregated discretionary portfolios with a small cap UK equity bias. An interesting point to flag up is, is we're seeing a significant increase in activity uh, in terms of the number of secondary placings and IPO transactions uh, in our pipeline in recent weeks. So uh, a few of these have been announced already. So one of them is Sigma Rock, a buy and build uh, in the a store in the aggregate space. A second one is STX Energy, an oil producer in North Africa. Uh, and the final uh, one that's been announced is Chromec, which is a specialist in radiation detection equipment. Behind these deals that have been announced, there are further nine in our pipeline so far, uh, and that stretches out to March. What I worry about when you see such a pickup in activity is the, that it's basically the private equity cashing out at the top of the cycle as they see it, or you have businesses taking advantage of the strong markets to float blue sky ideas or things come on at inappropriate valuations. I don't think it's like that this time though. I think valuations are generally attractive, the subject matter is sensible, uh, and whilst there are some PE houses out there uh, looking to take some money off the table, I think they're in the minority. So clearly, the risk profile of entering into these kinds of trades is not going to be for everyone. Uh, but if you ac have access to the transactions as we do, the valuations are sensible. And if generally it's a, a secondary placing, you'll have a built-in catalyst. So the company's raised money to do an acquisition. Uh, I think these types of deals can be a very uh, interesting way to add significant alpha to your portfolio.